Today, we're gonna take our amazing list view with Xamarin Forms and we're gonna MVVMify it. That's right, we're gonna talk about data binding, ancestor binding, relative binding, all the good things to really make your list view shine to get rid of that code behind. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno. Welcome back to my channel. Here you'll find all sorts of good things around dev tips, tech reviews, and hand-on tutorials. Today we are continuing building out our My Coffee application that we took from File New all the way currently to displaying a list of beautiful, beautiful coffee beans from around the world. <laughs> now, um, I've been doing this in my Xamarin 101 series, and if you're brand new to the channel, you definitely want to check out all the videos there. So make sure that you subscribe um, to the channel, and that will make sure you get notified if you ding that bell every single time I release a brand new video. Also, um, what I've been doing is really kind of going deeper on some of the process here when it comes to building applications with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. So instead of just kind of having these high level brief overviews, I want to describe the why and the how when we go into building these applications. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up uh, and any of the videos, it really helps the channel. We're nearing, I think 6,000 subscribers, maybe on our way to 7,000. I'm really excited for it. And I'm appreciated every single one of you that's left a comment that's been asking for different, uh, different episodes and I'm on my way. I'm recording as many as I can as fast as possible. So let's head over and let's MVVMify. All right, so if you remember last time we were building the coffee application, here it is. It has grouped lists of coffee, as we can see here. And the thing that we've done so far is we do have some MVVMification, but it's not really too crazy on the MVVM front. What we have is uh, two observable range collections that comes from MVVM helpers that enables us to add, delete, add ranges of different data. Um, so it's optimized with the Xamarin Forms list view or the collection view or anything else that's taking in an I enumerable. Now, we also have here pull to refresh. So I can pull here, it waits two seconds, and then it continues on. Um, and that is with this async command um, here. Now, I often like to talk on my channel and many people have said like, I don't like MVVM. I just wanna do stuff in my code behind. That's totally fine too. You don't even need to put it in a separate file. You can put everything in here and that also works. Some people like to put it in separate files because it helps the testability. So if we take a look at the coffee page, we have this big list view in here, right? Now there is some MVVM binding um, just because it makes it kind of easier to data bind things up to. Yes, could I have set the item source directly to the grouping? Absolutely. Could I have manually set this key binding to key? Absolutely. Um, but I decided that this is going to help when we're adding, removing, pulling down data, which is super helpful. Now, I wanna talk here about this refreshing command because there is a um, refreshing um, event in here. So if I zoom in, we can see we have the refreshing over here. If I go ahead and, and um, add a command, we'll see that this will create a, um, a command in our code behind called refreshing. So we could manually trigger is refreshing and we could also manually not trigger it from our code base. So we decided here to not do an event, but instead simply do is refreshing set to a data bind of is busy. And then the refresh command, which is what gets executed when somebody pulls down to refresh here, is the refresh command. Now we talked early in our MVVM1 video, 101 video about commands. So that's why I kind of talked about this here is that, hey, you know, I have this refresh command and in this instance, it's just like a button click. It is something that is going to occur when the pull happens. So when this pull happens, it goes, and if I add a breakpoint into our refresh, we will see that we have this here. So boom, is busy is equal to true. Boom, it's good to go, and it's good there. Now, I want to talk about why I set this to one way. And I set this to one way because um, by default, this mode would be two way, which means that when someone pulled to refresh, then the data binding would set is busy to true. But often inside of the MVVM stuff here, 
this is busy would say, if it is busy, don't do anything. And then said is, is busy to true. So what this does, it says, Hey, only allow the view model one way to update this in the UI. So the UI won't update it, but the view model will be able to update it. So that's sort of like what is going on here. Now, of course you could have an is refreshing command data bind it there and it would be totally fine. The benefit of doing it this way is that if I was to come in and manually trigger refresh here, then when I said is busy to true, it would display automatically this little spinner here for me. So that's a huge benefit of this data binding is that I don't have to manually turn on and off the is refreshing. I just have to set this one property. Now we did do a few things here. So this item selected here specifically is, uh, set to a tapped event, uh, selected and also tapped is also set to tapped. Now what both of these items do is set the selected, um, item, um, specifically. So whenever someone taps on an event that that's just an event, it's not actually selecting anything, but it does have the idea that it is tapped and then selected means that it is, it is selected, right? So what we were doing in the code behind is whenever someone would tap on it, we would just sort of like get rid of, get rid of it. So it would deselect it right away. That's kind of nice. So the selection never occurs. And then what we do here is on list view item selected, we simply make sure that the coffee is not null. And then we display an alert that it's good to go. So we can do a few things here, um, to MVVMify this. So what I'm going to do is go to my view model and I'm going to say coffee selected coffee. Okay. And I'll say public coffee selected coffee here. And then I'm going to do just simply get, and I'll say selected coffee. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're just simply going to put in a set here. Now we could do an on property notified event, but what we're, what we actually want to do is, is do something when that value does not equal null. So for example, um, what we may want to do here is say, if value does not equal null, okay, then what we're going to do is do something and perform some action. So this is where you may have some logic that the tap event is going on. You're storing some value, you're incrementing something. It's just going to depend on your application. Maybe you're navigating to a new page. Um, for here, what we're going to do is we're just going to say uh, application dot current main page dot display alert. And we're going to say selected and then we'll say value dot um, name. OK, and just say OK. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set the value equal to null at the end of the day. And then what we can do is we can say selected coffee equals value and then on property changed. So oh, not on platform on property changed. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this will automatically call that the selected coffee was changed and boom, we're good to go. So remember here that this is going to, you know, basically we're going to set this to null. We're going to raise the notification and it's going to get nulled out. So whenever we set this, it's going to be set, but then it's going to go away. So a few things that you could do in this is you could have a backup coffee, right? Coffee of previously selected, right? And then what you could do is you could say previous selected equals value. And now you're always going to have reference to whatever the previously selected coffee was. Um, and you kind of want to be aware, right? This is a setter. So it is kind of weird to do asynchronous programming inside of here. It's a little bit tricky. So kind of be aware of that. So now what we want to do is get rid of these two, you know, events basically. So this item selected and the item tapped. So what we're going to do is we're going to say selected item, and this is going to be a binding to our selected coffee. Now, by default, this is uh, one way. So it's just whenever someone taps on it, it will set the view model. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, we want the mode to be two way. So whenever they tap in the UI, it gets able to set it. And whenever I update in the code behind, it can also set it too. So let's go ahead and now run this and add a breakpoint to see exactly what's going to happen. And remember, when we go ahead and start this application, our coffee is going to be null, which means that we're going to get some events here in our code behind. So here's our application starting and I should be able to tap on one. Oh, there we go. Cool. So we get our coffee. Here's the yes, please. 
Now we're gonna go ahead down and we get our coffee and we can add a breakpoint here too. So we tap on one, we get a little notification that's gonna continue. We get our coffee still on our previously selected. We're then gonna null it out and then boom, we're good to go. All right, we have that available to us. Tap on sip of sunshine, tap on that, go there, right? So you can easily do this um, inside of this you know, application. So here, because we haven't nulled it yet, the value of name is gonna get passed down. If you are passing the object into something, you may wanna store that object first, just so there's no references that are kind of being wiped out when you set it to null of that value. But here, this is gonna work pretty decent. And then, as you can see, we kind of no longer really need that those two different events in our code behind because it handles it all for us automatically. So this is super duper nice because you're able to kind of recreate that in your UI. So based on what you're doing, you can do this. Now there is another um, type of mechanism to do this, which is event to command. And this I'm gonna to go to in another video, but this is built into the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And what event to, to um, command does is it enables you to turn any event, such as item tapped, item selected, into in a command. So, so an event to command enables you to kind of really specify that, which, which might be a little bit more elegant to this, but in either way, you would end up just sort of removing, you know, some of this and you'd still data bind to this selected coffee. So you'd always need that here. All right, let's go ahead and MVVMify one more thing inside of this list view. Uh, which are these context actions down inside of here. Now these context actions are special, they're menu items, and these are actually buried inside of the view cell. They're on the view cell, and they have very, very special data binding properties to them. They're actually kind of unique uh, in this aspect, but um, what we can do is data bind uh, the command and the command parameters to pass the binding up to our view model. So if we actually run this again, remember we have the simple menu click event. And what that is doing here is it's finding the menu items binding context and um, parsing that and then popping up that dialogue. So if we go ahead and debug this, long press, hit favorite, we're gonna note that down in here in our binding context, we have our coffee. And that's, that's where we're at right now. So we're inside of this binding context coffee, and that is where we're at. And then it will go ahead and pop up our favorited coffee. There we go. So we wanna get rid of this. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create an asynchronous command in our code behind. Um, you can create a command as well, but if you're doing async stuff, you wanna do that. So I'm gonna do public async command, and this is gonna be of type coffee. And we want to do that because we're going to pass the coffee that's the binding context into our actual asynchronous command here. So we're going to call this favorite command and we're going to do a get. And then what we're going to do down here is simply do a um, async task of favorite, pass in the coffee, coffee, and then go down here and we'll just say if, you know, coffee, to, if it equals null, We'll continue else. Let's just go ahead and grab some code down here, pop it up, await it, and we will go ahead and say coffee.name, right? So coffee.name and then favorite. There we go. So that's pretty simple. And of course, we'll need to initialize it. So we'll say favorite command and we'll say equals a new async command of coffee uh, favorite. So that's the name of the event and then boom. Remember async command, all this templating that comes from MVVM helpers. Built into Xamarin Forms is also a normal command that can take an optional parameter. So, okay, let's take a look here and let's go back into our XAML page and we're gonna go ahead and delete this clicked event. We wanna get rid of those events. And the first thing we can do is simply set the command parameter. There's a command and a command parameter. So here, this is just going to be a binding to dot, which is the current binding context, which if we remember, that is our um, coffee, right? So that's our actual coffee that's coming in. So we're going to pass that in to our command. Now, there's a new thing in Xamarin Forms that came out maybe in version four or something called relative source bindings. This is one of my favorite things. Um, and 
unfortunately it doesn't work with the menu items, but it works with just about anything else. And I'll show you what this looks like. But the problem that we have is that our brand new favorite command is not on our binding context, which is our coffee. It is on our view model up above. So we need to get access up there to our command, right? We need to get access to it. We need to say, Hey, don't look at my binding context, look somewhere else. So this is pretty cool because we can use reference binding, which means, Hey, go reference anything else on the page and use that as the binding source. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give this a name. So we're going to say X name and I called to call this my page. I could call this anything. Let's just call it, you know, coffee page here. And that'll be the name, just like we named anything else and gotten access to it from the cone behind. So then what I can do is I can come in and say command. And instead of saying binding to favorite command like this, that's not what we want. It doesn't exist on the coffee. We're going to go in and we're just going to drop this down. I'm going to say, let's use uh, the source property. Okay. And the source property lets us say what and where do you want to use um, as the binding context here, the binding source? Like where, what is this? What is the source? And by default, it's the current binding context. So here we're going to say X colon reference because it's a reference type. And I'm going to set it equal to the coffee page. Remember, that's what we called it up here. Coffee page, coffee page. So anything that has a name, it will work and be good to go. So then what I can do here is uh, I can then set the path. Okay. So I'm going to say where on that object does it exist? Well, on that page, it's going to exist on the binding context dot favorite command. Okay. So that is not the most elegant code, but let's review here. It's a binding and it's going to say, use the coffee page as the source and the path or what exactly is it am I binding to? Well, it's the binding context of the page dot favorite command. Okay. Now it's, it's, it's kind of just the verbose way of what this is doing, right? Or even this binding image, this binding by default says the source is me. And the path is whatever I put afterwards, right? But I'm just specifying it here in code and I can go ahead and right click and I use XAML styler here and that fixes it all up and it looks pretty good. So now we can run it again. And what we're able to do now is go ahead and look at our view model. We'll add some breakpoints here and set it here. Let's go ahead and bring up our emulator again. Here it is long press hit favorite. Boom. Now we're in our view model, right? It's gone up the stack, pulled it down and we're good to go. There's our coffee. It's going to go ahead and now pop up a uh, dialogue and boom, we're good to go. So now we can have favorite commands, delete commands, all sorts of things on our item. Now I will say this though, there is another relative source um, binding that I really, really like. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't work on these menu items, but it works on everything else inside of the view cell template. So if you had a swipe, um, uh, view inside of here, or you want to add a button inside of here, or this works in all sorts of different contexts, it's really, really cool. It's nice. Um, and I'll show you what this, what this would look like in code, because I don't really like giving this a name and saying like, go give this a name. And if I change the name, it kind of gets a little messy and, and I'm not a huge fan of this, uh, you know, binding context dot favorite command. So what you can do is let's go ahead and put a button in here. So I'm going to say button and I'll say text equals favorite. Okay. And that should give us a big, beautiful button. Okay. So it's a button inside of here. And again, the problem is if I put a command to favorite command, it is going to do what we'll try to execute on that coffee. But what we can do is we can come in and we can, of course, say command parameter, just like we did before binding dot. Okay. There it is. Now what we'll do is we're going to say, um, command and we're going to say binding to source. And let me go ahead and, and drop this down a little bit here and drop this down over here and say source. And we are going to specifically say, um, it is a relative source. Okay. 
Now this relative source has a few different properties in it, like ancestor level and ancestor type. So it's going to say, how far up do you want to look for a specific type, which is really, really cool. So this is nice because it can traverse all the way up as many levels as it needs to. So we're just going to need to specify the type here and we'll go ahead and drop this down again. And I'm going to say, well, this type is going to be X colon type of our view model coffee. Okay. This actually gets pretty verbose, but you know, bear with me here. So we have a binding. The source isn't explicit, right? It's just, here's what type to look for. And then what we can say is find that first one in the list. And then down here, we'll say path equals favorite command. Okay. So it's surprisingly longer than this one up here because we're just setting a source to this page, but it's a little bit more error proof because if I was to change the view model or do something else, like this is saying like, no, this command exists on this view model and it is in this hierarchical tree, go find that and go set that. And now if I tap on this over here and we find it, I think I need to um, simply refresh it here. We'll see that the relative source ancestor and the data binding command all work together to traverse up that tree. So let's go ahead and let it launch again here. And now we can go ahead and tap on it and boom, we get that favorite command. And if I go ahead and of course add a breakpoint here, we now get our favorite command inside of it. So boom, we got the coffee, it's coming in. So we've really MVVM affied it. I would say that this relative source binding, which is probably what you'd end up using 95% of the time because it works on 99% of the controls works. But I also wanted to show you the reference um, here because what's nice about the reference is that you can reference any control on the page. You can reference a slider, a text entry, and you can bind something to another one. And it's this direct binding automatically and you can set it to the path. So it's really nice to be able to take that and pull it all in. But really, you know, that is how you can MVVMify the selection process of the list view, but also all the things inside the list with relative source bindings and, of course, even these reference bindings as well. So based on what you're doing. Anyways, that has been my MVVMification of the list view. In the next episode, what we're going to do is take a look at how to do event to commands to simplify this even more. I didn't want to get into it in this video because these are some steps to further in the learning process. Event to command really deserves its own entire video because it's more than just the list view. It's kind of for anything, any event that I possibly want to turn into a command, I can do that. So we're going to take a look at that next week. So make sure you subscribe to this channel right here, the James Montemagno channel. So you get notifications by clicking and dinging that bell every time I put out a new video. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. That helps other people find, you know, the video, or whatever YouTube's algorithm is, those things really matter. And of course, leave a comment if you like this video video, if you have questions on it, or um, if you have other suggestions of what you want to see. Don't forget, I also live stream on Fridays usually over at twitch.tv slash James Montemagno, and I do upload those videos right here onto YouTube into the live stream playlist, where you can see where I'm building out different applications live, answering your questions live as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.